What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3 and we're straight back to Max. Max surviving on Gasil all by himself. Well, with three robots, so it's like Elon Musk with his androids. Uh, still no major progress made in terms of building, but they have now seemingly finished the, the structures, the, the ladders and the, and the paths and dug out in order to be able to get to the different puddles of liquid chlorine still needing to build the uh, power generator and the pumps and all the piping so there's still quite a lot to do the rocket itself needs to be retrofitted so the three rover pods on it are all scrap and dismantling them will give you some resources back remember so there's one option the trailblazer that I actually came down on also the same uh, I think I just... Did I just delete the battery? I don't know. I think I did. I didn't mean to. I can build it in. But you can see all of the robots are currently not collecting necessarily, but they are undoing all of these capsules. Now, you can do them manually, but you can also do them with a proper payload unloader, I think it's called, which is a much better option. We are going to need to refuel the rocket. Um, so, in... To do that, that means we're going to need fuel, obviously, which is petroleum in this case, and fertilizer, which is our oxidizer. And the oxidizers are solid, so that's fine. But with the fuel being a liquid, I'm not sure how it will work, if it will work. The last thing I want to do is open a capsule with liquid in it, and then it just spills out everywhere. So we're going to look at, when we've got power, getting the payload unloader as well. Two advantages to that. The first being that it's automatic. The second being that it has the port, so it has a port for conveyor belts for your solids, a gas port for gases, and a liquid port for liquids. So that means we can wire up the liquid port directly to the rocket's fuel tank. They'll unload the, sorry, it will unload the fuel, which will go straight into the rocket. Nice and easy. Again, we need uh, the power to be sorted first, um, but we can do that. It's not a problem. Right, we're jumping back home because there's a rocket waiting to come in as well and we've got what you would call a full load on the shelf at the minute. Yep. So I've got my science rocket plus the drill rocket I'm trying to figure out plus the additional uh, telescope rocket that can't really travel far enough to do anything useful at the minute. Meanwhile, I've got the cooling in place so we are getting rad bolts now coming in quite nicely. Uh, which allows us to send all these resources over. You can see they're still throwing in cobalt into that storage thing there on the right, uh, which then is being sent into the interplanetary sender and will, of course, do the same. Now, I'm going to try and put a conduction panel behind this because the rad bolt chamber is overheating or starting to warm up, and I don't want it to damage because if it's got a 1,000 rad bolts in there and then it breaks I'll lose them all and that will be very very painful for my face and no one wants a painful face and there it goes refreshed and resent the rail gun has now fired off a load more capsules all of which I believe are cobalt ore all of which mean that when they arrive we can actually start achieving something useful Get in a data bank there, but let's be honest, a data bank is useless because uh, it's one data bank. I think we've got about six or so hundred waiting to be used at home. So, just going to rip down the walls here for no other reason than reason one is I'd say it's the main reason, but it's not. The main reason is because it looks odd because it's not finished. Uh, the main, the, the second reason, which should be the main reason, is it's free resources. Now, this desk I can't destroy, but I can move, so I'm going to move it because I want the payload uh, machines and that to go in there. As close to the batteries as possible, so I have to build as less wires as possible. This isn't supposed to be pretty. It's supposed to be functional. Any second now, it should start raining capsules of cobalt. Or, oh, there's the first one. Cobalt or the robots immediately make their way out. Are they actually going to... I don't think they're going to... No, they're not going to... They don't undo them unless you put the command on it to be emptied. Unless you have the payloader thing that I talked about. 
uh, payload unloader, that's the word, then it's automatic. So this is cobalt, which means we can now start building the first thing, which is the coal generator. With that, we already have coal. Uh, what is that? About two and a half tons, but we haven't opened all the captures yet. I think I sent five tons of coal over, roughly, um, which turns out to be the exact, pretty much the exact right amount, to be honest. Um, and then we need the payload unloader and the various other things. For now, though, it's just a base of time waiting for these guys to open the capsules, collect the goods, and get them going. As soon as we have enough resources or as soon as we have enough cobalt or undawn, it will then allow us to build the... And that looked like it was it there. The flicker means that you've gained another item. There it is. So we can now build the coal generator and get that on way. So retrofitting the rocket, you can see I've now added the large liquid tank battery and the liquid tank will be going on there as well to store the stuff we need. Now we have the cobalt ore over, we can do that. I'm also going to build the targeting beacon. Uh, this means that when you send the captures over from your home base, as I've been doing a lot, it will land on it or very close to it. Now, I, I was going to put it where it is, but I do change my mind when I realise two things. One is that I don't really have enough resources for building cables all the way out there. And two, it should be closer to where I actually want it to be. It needs to be near the actual, where the payload is going to be. So I will likely dig a hole and move it a lot closer. But that just means all of the capsules land in the same place instead of all over the surface. With a sweeper, actually, you can automate it fully then because the sweeper will move them into the unloader for you. But I'm not doing that because we've got three robots to do it for us. Or rovers, as they're actually called. And there you go. So it's just there next to the ladder. I'll knock out a bit more land to hope in the hope that they will send through. So all the resources will land around there. Two to three blocks left or right of that beacon is fine any more than that i don't think should happen and there is the payload unloader so as we get those captures now they'll be automatically brought to it it's basically just a giant tin opener right this is the liquid pipe then so when we send the fuel it will come into here and immediately go straight up and into the fuel tank of the rocket and allow us to actually get home safely when we're ready to we will need to build more ladders to get up there to build that we the mission here is quite simple the the rocket is going to have a liquid tank on it when that liquid tank is full of liquid chlorine the mission is complete and max will travel home with that resource anything else we get in the meantime will be a bonus but the mission is simple it's just the liquid chlorine now the liquid tank the large liquid tank holds 30, I think it's 34,000-ish uh, kilograms of a liquid. And as I said, the tanks for the rockets hold 450. So effectively, that's 60 launches, right? Plus change. Um, so it's a good amount. And what I'll try and do, because the pumps will continue to run while we're not there, if I actually build a liquid tank on the asteroid it will continue to fill up that liquid tank while we're not there so when we come back it'll be even faster maybe i don't know if all this stuff's going to work but it's what i'm going to try now you can see here that i've set up a loop so really crude arrows apologies it was quick um so what's basically happening now is out of the chamber, it fires into the interplanetary dongle. But this time, if there is overspray, which is happening all the time, it skips it because it's full. As you can see, it travels over there to the far right, then up to the top, and the diagonal back down puts it straight back into the Radbolt chamber. So any overspray basically bounces all the way back to where it came from. The only way it would be uh, still wasted is if the chamber is a thousand and then of course it would go into the floor. But that's how I've done it for now and it does actually work because there's always a lot of overspray with how I've set it up. Obviously it's probably me. 
Um, and this way, it's wasting none of the rad bolts. So the overspray just basically gets around the whole circle back to where it started, and then it's used next time. Hopefully that helps other people if you uh, are struggling with the same thing. And even better than that, you should see it working now because it's about to fire. So there you go. It's firing them up and it's working as intended. But then there is some overspray, which then goes up and per the thing around and straight back into storage. Because while it's cleaning itself, it just, yeah, it still sprays unnecessary amounts. So now you can see that's a lot more of the items traveling over to Gasil. Um, to finalize hopefully the setup we shouldn't need to send much more over there we may need to send a bit of steel if it wasn't included in this package I've just sent uh, but if it was then it will be the last batch of goods we should need to send over I want to take some of the seeds home with me so I'm going to rip out this little statue here chuck in a storage chest storage bin um, and I'll set that to seeds. There's only one type of seed on this asteroid, so Max will hopefully collect a few of them. I only need two or three, to be honest, but I think he ends up collecting about 20. It's fine. The more of them, the better, because when we get home, I want to try and do the whole gassy moves at home. I don't want them to do them on a different asteroid, and I'd like to take the gassy seeds with me. I'm not sure what else I can use them for, if I can use them for cooking. I don't think so, um, but it's always nice to experiment and get all of these new items and Fandango things that we're finding out in the depths of space. Home to our home asteroid. I also added an extra payload unloader because we were getting so many captures coming in. So you can see them now coming in and landing around that beacon as they are so intended to do. We then just require the robots. And as you can see, my guy as well is picking them up. Take them automatically over to the machines. They will then get undone. Nobody needs to practice about. But the resources will then be deleted. Sorry, not deleted. Delivered to wherever they need to be. If they're a liquid, they're going to go through the liquid pipe. If they're a solid, they will need to go through a conveyor belt. They won't drop them on the floor. Now, we're very lucky, actually. I chose Max sort of randomly. Turns out he's a mecha engineer anyway. So the conveyor belts and droppers and all of them items that we need he can build which usually you can't because you need a mecha which is quite uh weighs up the skill tree so uh, that is something you need to look out for in the future if you're doing it i got very lucky so now we're getting somewhere i also need to add the liquid tank now there's three available two of which we can build one i'm going for and that is the large one the large one requires steel, which, as I've mentioned, is something that we can send over no problems whatsoever. The colossal one is requiring the uh, alloy, fancy alloy. So, yeah, we can't do that. So, yet yeah, another new thing for me. I couldn't figure out how to get the liquid in. You'd think you'd just plumb it in, right, and it'd work. But, no, it's fancier than that. You have to use your command pod. Um, so, your command pod has an intake and an outtake, as always, but... The intake supports everything. I've used it for water. But in this instance, what you have to do is use the special intake valve that you install in the main module. Then installing, sorry, then pumping the liquid into the module will allow it to go to that tank. All will become much clearer. Hopefully now. So inside the caps, you can see down there at the bottom, that is the liquid fitting that allows you to take an in source and you can see it will come in from the green and then go out of that white so all we need to do now is plumb in the water or sorry the liquid you want to store from the outside into the white port which of course then goes into the internal green port straight back into the white port and into the storage vessel that you're wanting to use Never really dealt with it much before. It's quite clever. Uh, there are, I'm sure, easier ways of doing it or maybe, like, fancy ports. It's the same with the rails as well. So to get the conveyor belt to load into the ship, you have to use the adapter that fits to the rocket port. You can't do it directly into the storage of the rocket. So that's a lot to think about in the future. And what other taps or... What are they called? Adapters you need to install on the capsule to make it uh, basically available to do anything that you wish i don't know if i mentioned it but just there where i've clicked dig above there there was a batch of liquid chlorine i have opened that up so it falls down to make it uh, 
fall into that. Most of it, anyway, fell into that one there on the left um, to pump out. All we need to do now is get the power cables in, the pumps in, and the pipes finished. And we should start pumping liquid chlorine into our ship. And again, once that is full, the Operation Gasil is over. In time now, you can see the meteor coming in. And these are the cows, the flying cows that I've been wanting to see. The first time I've seen them in this game, actually. And there they are. They look like manatees, to be honest with you. Big, fat, flying cows. Now, these require gas, grass as a food. And they secrete natural gas. So they fart, basically. Just like real cows. The only addition to that is you can milk them for, I think it's called brackeen which is an end game resource as well. Of course, we're not doing anything like that here. What I want to do is chuck in some critter pods. I've, you've just seen I've added one there. I end up going for four, I think. Uh, and we'll take some of these home with us along with some grass seeds and we'll try and domesticate them at home. But of course, that's going to be in the future because for now, we're concentrating on this mission and there's no way we're taking these home or any of the resources home until we have our full tank of liquid chlorine. I did have to give him ranching in order to collect them, though. Um, but it was worth it because we want to take these home, right? So you can see him taking it up there, puts in the caption, and then you can see the cute little face sticking out, looking out the window. So that's one of the gassy moves that we're now taking home. I will, of course, try and get another three to add to that. Look his face. It's cute. First time I've dealt with these, though, as I say. There's plenty of them about. All of them looking for food, but none of the food can grow because none of this asteroid is set up for the actual grass seed to grow, which is a bit unfortunate for all of these guys landing here. I was thinking about killing them to see if they just give meat as normal. I expect they do, but I didn't actually get around to it, to be honest. Still trying to push to get these cables and pipes in. It's taken a long time because the robots can't do it, and Max is having... A hard time, if I'm honest. Stress is okay so far, but I did give him a day off, I think it was, uh, previous to just going and getting that gassy moo into that capsule. Okay, so breaking these down, I've done them into stages. You can see there I set that as an emergency level 10, so they finished it. That pump is now running, and finally we have liquid chlorine moving towards the ship stage two there set to get that second pump running you can see it's coming up to the capsule this is where you'll see what i meant by the additional uh, switch so it will come in as you expect it to come in just here and then it will go down to that tap you've added in specifically for the internal storage and go into that then when you come out and look at the rocket as an external option that fluid tank there you can see is now filling up Holding 35,000 litres of the substance. When that is full, we'll leave. For now, though, it's a waiting game. Two pumps now running. It's not necessarily faster because, of course, the pipe only can transfer so much. But the real aim here is to make sure that they're all being done. So I just need to get a liquid tank now in place to as a backup. And then we'll see how we go from there. With the chlorine being collected, you can see the tank is about, I don't know, 15% full or so. We've got full fuel now. We've got full oxidizer. I'm going to add in three more capsules for the gassy moves. For now, we're just basically wasting time. Whatever we can do from this point on is a bonus. So we need to get some gassy moves, collect as many of the seeds as possible. And I'm even going to try and do a bit of digging and steal as much of the solid chlorine as well while we're here. The only time we have is the one that is filling up that liquid tank. And there's no real way of making that any faster. I've also put a drain there so that the uh, polluted water that had built up in the capsule has been drained out. And obviously it just evaporates into the non-atmosphere of space. Just as a bit of a clean-up job. I added an additional generator to the system. Because it was running a bit low on, on power because of the three pumps. Uh, also, it's powering the rocket as well because the solar panel was not good enough to do that. You can see that's just going up and up and up into there. I'm going to put a tank, as I mentioned, in between so that when we've finished and we do launch, the pumps will continue as long as we don't run out of coal 
to pump more chlorine into that tank there. Then when we come back, whatever liquid is in there, you can take it out without using any power, right? Because the tanks drain through pressure. So if we come back in, say, 20 cycles, and the power by then will obviously have stopped, and the pumps will have all stopped, whatever liquid is in this water tank, or this liquid tank, will be able to just drain straight into the rocket without any need for power. So it will just be a waiting game again. As it stands, though, that is the operation in progress and we are looking very good moving forward we finally have our liquid chlorine i just hope that it's actually useful if it turns out it's not then at least we've learned other things and we've got a gassy moose and seeds that we'll be getting and taking home with us also we are at time now though so we are going to have to see what happens next in the next episode hopefully by then max may be able to go home and stop having to spend every day of his life holding his breath i can't imagine that's fun for anyone right in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome as always. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Goodbye.